So, welcome to the uh, next lecture, uh, lecture 36, uh, Organic Food and Human Health. So, by now we have discussed the, the quality of the food materials irrespective of the organic farming or chemical farming. So, based the ORS, ORS value, oxygen radical absorbance capacity of the fruits and vegetables. And we have discussed specifically the organic produce, the organic farming, why organic farming and that gives the higher ORS value or the higher oxygen radical absorbance capacity as compared to the, the produce of the chemical farming. So, that means the, the consuming the fruits or vegetables having high ORS value, the daily intake as a natural sources of antioxidants. So, that can uh, the control many diseases in human health. So, this lecture specially discuss the how the organic foods that can that can be helpful for combating or the controlling the some chronic diseases in, in human health. So, coming this one as you, as, as you discussed uh, earlier, so uh, mainly the free radicals, so the mechanism also we have discussed, but still a glimpse this one. So, as you see the free radicals, so these are the unpaired, the free radicals, the unpaired electron. So, they need uh, the because this unpaired electron, so they cause this cell damage, so the either damage of DNA because this is a very reactive, um, reactive species as a, as a unpaired electron, so reactive one. So, they do cause cell damage, they have this scavenging activity, so they can uh, damage the DNA. So, to make it the uh, non-reactive, so it, it needs a electron, electron that could that should come from other sources. Antioxidant what they do, they do uh, provide the release the electrons so that you can neutralize these free radicals. That means free radicals are unstable, these are the unstable atoms. So, to become them more stable, they take electrons from other atoms and they make so in that process they cause damage. So, this the the this can be made stable by providing electrons. So, antioxidant role is that donate electrons so that that can neutralize the free radicals and that can scavenge the free radicals. The, the free radicals can become inactive so that the you can uh, minimize the damage the health problem. So, this is what the other uh, free radicals, free radicals are unstable atoms uh, that can damage cells causing illness and the uh, aging also because uh, in the higher formation of free radicals that can cause the aging. So, as the body ages it loses its ability to fight the effects of free radicals. So, the results is more uh, is more free radicals, more oxidative stress and more damage to cells which leads to degenerative process as well as the uh, normal aging. So, you can see uh, uh, Mm, so, uh, the aging comes because of the more formation of free radicals in the body, uh, so that causes aging. So, usually you have to take the regular intake of the natural antioxidants. So, you can know the Japanese, so they have the, the higher longevity and you cannot also the uh, understand the age or age from Japanese people because uh, they take regular the you know, uh, green tea. Green tea is a good, uh, good source of polyphenols as a regular uh, intake of the green tea, there is a polyphenol say antioxidants. So, um, by, uh, that way or, or any antioxidant say either the amla or any natural sources of antioxidant you can take regularly. So, that you can minimize the formation of free radicals also this as a aging problem. Uh, so, the free radicals and the what are the disease uh, due to uh, the free radicals you can say the various uh, studies and theories have co co connected to oxidative stress due to the uh, free radicals to uh, what they have what they, the in the effect of free radicals. Central nervous system disease such as Alzheimer's and other dementia that uh, that disease is known due to formation of the uh, free radicals. Then of course, the cardiovascular disease due to clogged arteries, uh, so free radicals with the, because of free radicals. Then autoimmune and the inflammatory disorder such as the rheumatoid arthritis and cancers that is due to the formation of free radicals. Then cataracts and the age related vision declines age related change in appearance such as loss of skin's elasticity, wrinkles, graying hairs, hair loss and change in hair texture, diabetes, then genetic uh, degenerative disease such as the uh, Huntington's uh, disease or the Parkinson disease. So, these are the some of the disease that uh, that is uh, there, may, there are many other reasons also there and free radicals formation free radicals also one of the reasons for this for this disease we cannot uh, rule out this is the free radicals. So, these are the uh, diseases either the aging, cancer, heart attack, anthrosclerosis, trauma, hypersia, stroke, cataractogenesis, retinal damage, liver injury, sexual dysfunction, periodontitis, vasospasm, dermatitis, asthma, arthritis. So, these are the some of the disease that is due to 
uh, the, uh, the free radicals because having the, the formation of free radicals in human body. So, uh, so the, the some of the, uh, re, uh, the disease can, can occur in the human body if there is a regular formation of free radicals and if those free radicals are not neutralized means we, our body we have the, the defense mechanism. So, this antioxidant the enzymes are secreted in body, but they may not be quite enough to fight the free radicals. So, we need the external sources and external sources that means the natural sources of free radicals should be supplemented daily to fight against the free radicals. So, uh, so what antioxidant free radicals that they do the means the antioxidants are the chemicals that lessens or prevent the effect of free radicals. So, they donate an electron as you discussed the previous lectures, they donate an electrons to the free radicals thereby reducing their, their reactivity. What makes antioxidant unique is that they can donate an electron without becoming reactive free radical themselves. So, uh, so these free radicals after donating electron they, they do not become reactive. So, that is the beauty of the antioxidant. So, they do donate free, uh, free radicals they neutralize the free radicals and they do not become at the same time they do not become also reactive they become reactive free. So, no single antioxidants can combat the effect of uh, every free radicals just as free radicals have different effects in different areas of the body every antioxidants behaves differently due to its chemical properties. So, the, so as you see the anti so healthy uh, healthy cells and the antioxidants they do neutralize these are the free radicals. So, the free radicals are damaging free radicals. So, the, they make damage nucleus. So, having anti regular intake of the antioxidants, they can uh, neutralize the free radicals and the protect the, the human cell from the damage. And they are the, uh, we will discuss some of the antioxidants and for the disease control. So, what are the antioxidants can be, can be antioxidants can be used for controlling some diseases. So, cancer is you know a very deadly disease. Now, you can see the cancer patient, the populations that increasing day by day even if the earlier we had the, the diagnosis of cancer only from the cities you say there is a pollution, uh, no uh, quality of the air and the food. Now, you can see the cancer patient also growing in the village areas in village every uh, many families we are seeing the, uh, the cancer patient uh, as it is growing. So, uh, because of cancer the damage uh, right the cancer the damage the cell caused by the free radicals especially the damage to DNA uh, may play a role in the development of cancer and the other. Uh, health related conditions. Antioxidants are chemicals that interact with and neutralize free radicals thus prevent from causing damage. So, regular intake of antioxidants not that uh, after the detection of the cancer it may be very difficult um, after control, but to avoid to have such disease we should have a regular intake from the usually from the childhood from the young age we should take regular intake of the antioxidants in your day, daily, daily diet. So, that uh, so, that you can neutralize body can neutralize the free radicals. So, avoid such disease. The body uh, makes some of the antioxidants that it uh, uses to neutralize free radicals. Of course, this is the, the natural defense mechanism within the body. So, these antioxidants are called the endogenous antioxidants, those are secreted from the body. However, the body relies on external or the exogenous sources, primarily the diet to obtain the rest of the antioxidant it needs. So, these exogenous antioxidants are, are commonly called dietary antioxidants. So, the as you say that body has own defense mechanisms. So, there is a secretion of the uh, glutathione peroxidase. So, many ant antioxidants are there, but they are not enough to fight against these free radicals. So, we need the external supply. So, external supply best shows the natural sources. We can take the daily intake of the fruits and vegetables, they can supply the natural antioxidants. So, there is a fruits, vegetables, and grains are resource of dietary antioxidants. So, some dietary antioxidants are also available as a dietary supplements. So, those can be taken regularly uh, to fight against the uh, deadly uh, the free radicals and to protect the human, human being from different diseases like cancer. So, examples of dietary anti antioxidants are include the beta carotene, lycopene and vitamin A, C and A that is a tocopherols. So, these are the, uh, the secondary metabolites that can be taken from different sources. We, we have discussed already the sources of this the secondary metabolites. So, you can the, re, the regular diets this can be included so that they can fight the formation of the free radicals. So, another disease that is a uh, the cardiovascular disease. So, this is cardiovascular disease heart disease you can say. So, this is the even though supplements uh, did not prove beneficial in avoiding heart problem foods uh, that are sources of antioxidants are still recommended have the regular intake of the foods 
natural sources of antioxidants to fight the free radicals uh, and to avoid this uh, cardiovascular disease. Eating a diet rich in antioxidants containing foods such as fruits, vegetables and whole grains is linked to a reduced risk of the cardiovascular, the heart and the, the blood vessel disease. So, this is a, so one of the uh, study that indicates that the, um, the, the body does a, that say the enzyme that say if the body has low enzyme that say glutathione peroxidase and the low HDL cholesterol, if you have the low enzyme glutathione peroxidase and low HDL cholesterol and the human being is a greater risk of the dying from cardiovascular disease. So, uh, HDL high density lipoprotein cholesterol that is a good cholesterol for the human being, LDL is a bad cholesterol that is a uh, low density lipoprotein, uh, but the HDL the high density lipoprotein that is a good cholesterol uh, if there is a low amount and also the glutathione peroxide is a low amount. So, those of uh, um, the human being are highly prone to the cardiovascular disease. So, this study also says that that combination of the low glutathione peroxidase and the low HDL cholesterol were up to 6 times more likely to die from cardiovascular disease than patient with low levels of HDL and high levels of uh, uh, GP3 activity. So, uh, that means having the low levels of glutathione peroxidase enzyme. So, that causes this more risk uh, for the patients uh, 6 times the more risk to die. Uh, from the cardiovascular disease as compared to the high levels of glutathione peroxidase. That means, this enzymes. So, those uh, the glutathione peroxidase uh, enzyme activity. So, those things as a as a antioxidants they come from this the uh, natural sources having the natural uh, the natural antioxidants. So, uh, foods and that say foods such as fruits, vegetables and whole grains as discussed you can take regular intake. So, so they can fight the free radicals. So, they can protect from such type of disease. And asthma, uh, that is a the symptomatic asthma that in adults is associated with the low dietary intake of fruits, the antioxidant nutrients vitamin C and manganese and low uh, plasma with vitamin C levels. So, this finding suggests that diet may be a potentially modifiable risk for the factor of development of asthma. So, we can, so having the diets that means the whatever disease you see, so most of them are the regulated by the daily food intake, whatever food you are taking. So, food is very, very important whatever food you are taking and moreover also the fresh foods and the processed foods and the junk foods. No? If the daily in the daily if the now the obesity also is a great problem in many developed country they want to come down the obesity by having the by reducing the junk foods and having taking fresh foods. So, fresh food in organic farming also the food processing also we do not prefer to have the processed food. Fresh foods are the better they have the high antioxidants as compared to the processed foods and also the foods from the organically produced crops have the less residue of pesticides and that is good for health as compared to the foods from the uh, conventional or the chemically produced pesticides. So, we will discuss the antioxidants and the effect on the human health. So, like the polyphenols, so that they inhibit the oxidation of uh, LDL that is a low density lipoproteins and inhibit the platelet aggregations, improve the endothelial dysfunctions, also the lower risk of the myocardial infractions. Uh, then effect on uh, the anti carcinogenics that you can see can avoid the cancers and prevent the neurodegenerative diseases protect against the neurotoxic drugs. Also treatment for the diabetes and treatment to prevent the uh, osteoporosis and inhibit the non hem and the iron absorption. So, this is the function of polyphenols. So, by having the polyphenols that they from natural sources we can avoid the we can take care of this, this uh, health problems. Also, these are the copper, zinc, manganese, selenium, and other uh, carotenoids. So, that the cofactor of antioxidant enzymes. So, protection against the oxidation of the lipids, uh, proteins, and DNA, and abductions and the uh, free radicals scavenging activity. So, other antioxidants like the vitamin C uh, that is a protect against the cancers and also protect from the heart disease, uh, improvement of the health of the cartilage, joints, and skins and maintaining a healthy immune systems, improvement in the antibody productions and increase in the absorption of nutrients having the vitamin C. Similarly, the vitamin A that prevents the coronary heart disease, prevent the formation of a blood clots, decrease the incidence of breast and the prostate cancers, brain protections, reduce long term risk of dementia, decrease risk of Parkinson's disease. So, these are the, the secondary uh, metabolites are the polyphenols are the beta vitamins are the coenzymes. 
So those are required in the daily intake of the foods, regular intake of the foods required. So to protect or to have a healthy hair, healthy uh, because now healthy bodies and to keep the body for the for the better work and the fit the body, uh, make healthy body. So that needs the diet, diet control. So diet should have the the fruits and vegetables and mostly the the fruits and vegetables should be free from the pesticide residues. And how the organic foods? We have some reports why the organic foods are the uh, healthy foods and they have the better health benefits as compared to conventional foods. So, we will discuss some of the studies. This is in the, uh, the monstrous studies that say from this reference you can see the uh, Fuchs et al. 2005. Improvement of physiological parameters was found among, among 17 nuns they eating biodynamic foods for one month. That means, so from the one month of study you can found, found that. So, biodynamic so, so organic the, the components of the organic farming having the biodynamic foods they have the the improvement in the physiological parameters that is nuns uh, on biodynamic diet, diet had lower blood pressure and better immune systems. So, they also evaluated their the physical fitness, intellectual acuity and the overall well being much better in these periods having the biodynamic food. Moreover, they declared the less headache and presented better ability to handle stress uh, having the organic or the biodynamic food as when compared to the nuns from the conventionally Produced, uh, they are consuming the conventionally produced foods. The another study according to uh, Percival study 14,000 uh, 14, children in 5 European countries they found children representing uh, anthroposponic the lifestyle that means the spiritual lifestyle including the biodynamic and the organic foods we are found to have less allergies and the lower body weight in comparison to group of the children they are consuming the the, from the market as a conventionally uh, produced foods. And also at the same time the results of the another study the Kuala birth force study in Netherlands they also reported that the consumption of organic dairy products with uh, that has a the lower eczema risk in children. So, that means, so these are the some of the studies the reported reference also given. So, you can go through these references and this indicates that the organic foods have the, the better health benefits as compared to the, the conventional foods. And also another study the pesticide residue, the pesticide residue belong to the that the dangerous food contaminants known they can have the, uh, the exact the carcinogenics, genotoxic, neurodestructive, endocrines and allergenic effects and found usually in higher content in conventionally produced plant food. So, these are the pesticide effects. So, those are the, the most of the pesticide residue are higher in conventionally produced food as compared to the organic food. So, there is a scientific evidence that dietary exposure of children to organophosphorus pesticides measured on the basis of the level of pesticide metabolites in the urine samples is much lower in organics than on conventional diet. So, these compounds are found that uh, uh, organic uh, uh, the people are taking organic diets have the most lower content of the in the urine samples are analyzed organophosphorus pesticides as compared to the, the people from the conventional diet. It can be concluded that consumption of organic foods provides a protective effect against the exposure to organ phosphorus pesticide commonly used in agricultural productions. And for uh, also another study better repair of uh, bacterial DNA and the disease of cancer cells proliferations on organic versus the conventional plant, ma plant materials. Animal studies indicated that better fertility index and increased immunoparameters in organically fed animals. So, that means, the, that indicates the organic produced food. So, they have the less pesticide residue and the low pesticide residue. So, that can cause a better health, health benefits and that can minimize many of the chronic diseases the, the, the ad, adverse effect of the, the pesticide residue, residue because conventional foods have the, uh, the, the pesticide residue the above the, the maximum MRL level, maximum residue limit le, levels. So, those cause the several the, the chronic health problems. So, having the regular organic foods that means, you can see your organic foods are free from pesticides. Uh, so, that we can we can uh, avoid many of the health related issues. So, we will give some examples of the pesticide residue in the uh, in the food made in the, the human body as you see one of the study here you can see the comparison of the residue of organochlorine pesticides in blood of lactating mother from different categories. You see the the organochlorine pesticide means the uh, and the uh, DDT or the dichloro, diphenyl, trichloroethane or the DD group of pesticides, those are these are the organochlorine pesticides and this is extensively used in India and also all over the world. They are used 
and if you see the difference, the comparison of the, the residue of the in this organ chlorine pesticides in the lactating mothers uh, in the blood of the lactating mothers you can find that different categories of the mother you can find the from the urban and the rural populations so this residue is higher in the women in the rural populations as compared to the urban population probably they are the more exposed to the pesticides in rural area in the agricultural applications so the the women in rural area they are they are, they are the highly vulnerable so detected as the more pesticides in the rural women and the other cases non addicted and addicted means either the tobacco or the beetle uh, beetle leaves so in that cases also so those who are the women are addicted to this they have the higher level of the the pesticide residue in their blood as compared to the non addicted women and also if you compare the from the general category to labor category the labor category has extent sufficiently higher the, the significantly higher pesticide residue in their blood as compared to the general category especially the labor category means they are exposed to the the far, the, the farm fields and exposed to the the pesticide applications and the spray in the air and also their activity that the, the so that's why they have the higher content of the pesticide residue in the the blood of the laborer as compared to the general category and if see the vegetarian non vegetarian so non vegetarians have the higher content of pesticide residue as compared to vegetarians so as as go on the food chain from one one stage to another stage so the as they consume on the, the shop of the either the poultry or the cattle so they do consume the um, the pesticide residue from the, the uh, residue also this is, this is in chain that also trans that's transfers to the human human body uh, being vegetarian or non vegetarians have the more uh, pesticide residue as compared to vegetarian so these are the uh, some of the example you can say that the the omens they are exposed and the lactating mothers so that means the the milk also contaminated that the, as the blood is contaminated milk is also contaminated with the pesticides and also that goes to the the young born baby so this example also you can see in another study if you see how the pesticides are very harmful and that cause the the human health problem this study in in uh, the pesticide residue in food chain in india if you see the percentage composition of the pesticide in human breast milk you can see here that around the this is uh, the indian study you can see in the uh, so here around 63% of the dde that's a the organochlorine pesticides groups uh, that's a higher around 63% in the human breast milk that is dichloro diphenyl uh, ethane so this is around 63% so there are others scs so um, scs and also hexachloro uh, um, uh, hypochloro hexen 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 compound or the ddt the 9% and others means the endosulfans uh, endosulfan sulfate endrin cypermethrin chlorpyrifos this is around 15% and this ddd so these uh, that means the the organ chlorine pesticide the dd that's a maximum amount 63% found in the uh, human breast milk also that is uh, you compare the national and international comparison of scs and ddt the hexen group and the organochlorine group Uh, residue label that nanogram per gram of lipid weight in human breast milk you can see different countries see canada uh, australia us and this year of study 1996 2003 in australia 2004 in us see the hexen groups you can see the canada it is 23 and ddt around 470 nanogram per gram of lipid weight in the human milk and in australia this is around 80.3 and 319.6 of ddt and usa scs is around 19 and ddt around 65 but you come to indian figure if you see as compared to the the abroad as they are all developed country canada australia and us so their figure of the the action group and the the organochlorine pesticide groups if you come to indian figure the nagawan nagawan this is this located in the uh, northeast part probably some some parts in assam in that case you can say is a 2010 study shows scs amount 2717 nanogram per gram of the lipid and case of the dt 3206 nanogram per gram of the lipid. so it is very very high as compared to the developed country in india what are the pesticide the, that is found in the human milk much higher significantly higher as compared to the the the, the developed country similarly you can say in the delhi it is around 340 in case of scs and 1500 in case of the 
and DDT. And in Kolkata, this is around 670 in case of SCS and DDT, it is around 1100. Ludhiana, where there is a rampant as the excess, excessive use of pesticide as the Punjab and Ludhiana, their figures are highly alarming. You can see here Ludhiana, it is around 5290 in case of the SCS and 17910 in case of the for the DDT. Punjab, interestingly, you can find Punjab in case of the 1998. It was DDT was 8,609 and it came down to 199 in 2012 because so, so there is a control measures after they have taken control measure applications from 8,609 nanogram per gram of the lipid weight it came down to 199 points or, 100 or 200 nanogram per gram of lipid weight. Similarly, the, you can find the DDT that the chlorinated hydro the organ chlorine pesticides it was in 1998, 18,211 and it came down to 1,914 in 2012. Though it has, it has come down, still it is very higher as compared to the, the, the figure we have seen from the developed world, it is very, very higher, higher in India. So, this is, gives a highly alarming because this type of pesticides in the human milk that goes that in the food chain that goes to young baby. Also, this study that is reported by the Bedi et al in the science of the total environment in 2013. They have also reported because of the, the, the human milk that goes trans because of the feeding of, feeding of the baby as a breastfeeded uh, baby, what happens this pesticide goes to the children, newborn baby. And if you see the, the provisional daily intake of the pesticide uh, in case of the children, if you, if you take a ins the infant of the uh, 5 kg weight and you can take the 700 gram of the milk per day and if you calculate the concentration of the, the this pesticides, the either the hexane group or the uh, chlorinated hydrocarbon organ chlor uh, chlorine group pesticide, the the estimated daily intake of the pesticide in the uh, in the baby, and the provisional the tolerable daily intake. If you compare that one, the specially for the DDT, the in, in, the in daily intake in the uh, he, the he, the young baby is around 12 times higher than the provisional daily intake. So, those, this report also they have reported say around 3 to 12 times higher than the, the threshold level you can say or the provisional daily intake of this baby whatever the recommended or the minimum or the maximum level and it is around 12 times higher DDT in, the, in this Indian regions. Similarly, the hexane group also but that is very uh, this around 1.2 or maximum 2 times higher as compared to the provisional total daily intake. So, this indicates that the newborn baby, so they are also taking, they are also carrying this pesticides from the mother and that has a, because you no know, having the pesticide in the food chain uh, because of the chemical farming, it comes from chemical farming if I have the, as we discussed earlier, 82 percent the pr produce of the chemical farming, they are contaminated and the res residue is the above maximum residue limit. So, having the chemical produce in the daily the your dining tables or the, on the tables, that means you are taking the poisons and also the, the, the pregnant women. So, they are also consuming that one and those transmit the newborn baby and you can find now cancer disease or many diseases from the young age also children because who has only seen the earth maybe um, four, 4 months, 5 months, they are also diagnosed or detected as cancer because of the, the food chain. So, this, this gives a signal or this indication that we need to be very careful our food habit or the daily food habit, daily food intake. We should be as much careful, very careful because of food habit so that you can take a good food, fresh food and healthy foods and mostly the foods free from pesticide residue and that can be possible if you can go for the organic foods. Daily intake of organic foods, we can remain free from pesticides and for a better health and for a better en environment for a healthy child. With this, I thank you all. Thank you. Okay.